Hi, everyone. I'm James Proton. I'd like to give a special thank you to our sponsors for the podcast. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have a tremendous show today. I'm really excited about it. Our friend and and sometime co-host and colleague Melissa Migliaro um, brought these folks to us. And this, I'm 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 going to jump right into this because I'm very excited about this show. We're talking with folks from Hakima Place, and it's a it's a remarkable organization. I can't do it justice, so I'm going to sit back and I'm going to let these amazing people. Uh, explain it to you. To my left is Kate Fletcher, who is the founder and originator of this organization. To her left is Maggie, an alum of the organization. And directly across from me is Laura Bright, who's the executive director of Fakima Place. And welcome, ladies. I'm I'm so excited to have you here. Thank, Thank you, good you. sir. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Uh, I, oh, listen, we w- when I looked at your website. And all I needed to do was read your mission and vision. And I knew this is, you guys needed to be here. You yeah, get me right you. here. Thank you. you thank so it, it was, uh, it's you. well done, well written. And I know it's a new website, but, and we'll steer everybody over to that. But so let's, let's start with you, Kate. This, so this is, this is your brainchild your, or your heart child, whatever you want to call it. But how did this, uh, well, let's t- start, where did you come from? You're, you're local, right? You're, you're. Well, I'm a Pittsburgher since I was 13. Okay. I was. Born and raised in Philly, part of my primary. No, we won't school. hold that against you. Yeah, really. Because you, you, you came, you came to the good side. You, Even you I okay. rooted for them, those poor buggers who lost in the Super Bowl. <laughs> my dad and I fought Phillies over Pirates for the whole of my life. Well, anyway. So uh, I spent some time as a child in an orphanage with my sister. My dad had a problem with alcohol and gambling, and he. Uh, was sent to prison the second time he took money from the bank where he worked. You know how uh, gamblers always think, this is my chance. I got the horse on this one. He's going to, well, that didn't work the first time. It didn't win the second time. He had to go to jail. So the two of us are in an orphanage, and I was a happy kid, outgoing, blah, blah. I learned when my sister was 32 that she had hated it, and she had blocked it all out. Wow. So then... I decided she younger? she's three years younger than I. Okay. And she was there from second grade to eighth grade. That's when the United States said children's homes are no place to raise a child. So huh. they outlawed them all, which is what Kenya is thinking about doing now. Anyway, I went to the convent when I was 13 and eight of us went. But then five of us returned for sophomore year in Pittsburgh. And then I was the only one to come back in junior year. My mother said, you're going to go to high school so far away. Why are you doing that? I said, mother, when God calls you, <clears throat> I'm surprised she didn't give me the back of her hand. But <laughs> uh, So I was in the convent until I was 40 years of age, by which time my sister had died. And I, my dad was in a nursing home, and I was the only one. So I wrote to the Pope, asked to be excused from my vows so I could take care of my mother. So I brought her up to Pittsburgh and we lived Mm -hmm. together for a year. And then the brain tumor that had gotten her took her. Okay. So now here I am, I'm 40 years old. I'm out in the wicked world for the first time in my life. Uh, You just spent 20 years in a convent. Yeah, so I don't really know how to live in this world. It had to be culture shock. Yeah, yeah. To the 10th power. Yeah. So here I was, I had, my two best friends had also been nuns, but they had been out for 15 years. So mm-hmm. I took their word as, as gospel. Okay. So when I'm 46, I meet this wonderful guy. I'm the nursing home administrator at Leader Country Meadows up the road Okay. At, in Bridgeville. And here comes the dentist who gives us every Wednesday afternoon to fix people's dentures or to fix their teeth. And I get a phone call. Everybody loves him. I've only talked to him once. And I get a phone call from the owner who says, I need you to fire Dr. Fletcher. I said, why in the world would I do that? Everybody loves him. The patients, their families, the staff. I said, they're going to kill me. He said, 
I need the dental office to be open two days a week. He can only give me Wednesday afternoon. So I had to fire him. But we went to the same church, and he sees me carrying the book, and he says, can I take you to breakfast? And I say, oh. Um, I just told my friends up there that I'd go to breakfast with them. So, sorry, I can't. Okay. <laughs> Next month, it's my turn again. He jumps out of the pew. He says, I'm embarrassed. I said I would take you to breakfast. And I, then I did nothing with it. Can I take you to dinner? I said, uh, I'm sorry. My vacation starts tomorrow, and I'm leaving for Florida. <laughs> he says, can I call you when you come back? I say, uh, sure. He'll never call. Well, he called. <laughs> and then, now I start calling all my friends because I'm 46 years old. I've never been on a date. I don't know what the protocol is. So I said, what do I do? Do I meet him at the door with my hat and coat already on? Do I show him my house? If I take him around my house, what do I say at my bedroom? There's my queen-size waterbed or what? I mean, you know, please. So he comes in and he's as nervous as I am. His wife has been deceased for three years. And he has a little list of places we can go. Oh, no way. <laughs> he says, Miss Kane, I don't know you very well. I know you're Irish. Would you like to go to the Blarney Stone? But if you have to work tomorrow, we'll get home too late. I said, you are so thoughtful. I do have to work tomorrow. Thank you. So he looks at number two. <laughs> he says, well, we can go to the living room. That's right across the street over there, Washington Road. I said, Oh, okay. He said, we can dance after dinner. I said, Dr. Fletcher, I have no idea how to dance. <laughs> I'm going, oh, shit, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing the same thing I did when he wanted to. He said, oh, or we could go to the south. Oh, the south side. I said, I love the south side. Let's do the south side. So that's what we did. We were chairman of the mission committee. We went to Appalachia every summer. Mm -hmm. Took many parishioners with us, fixed roofs, built ramps, rearranged the electricity. There would often be one source of electric and mm -hmm. everything was plugged in. He was just wonderful. He prayed for the poor. He worked in Rotary. He worked for all the homeless shelters. In St. Vincent de Paul, he worked for the poor. And he was my kind of guy. He loved God. He loved the church. He Can I ask what parish? St. Thomas More, right across okay. sure. no well. South Hills Village. No, well, okay. So he gets himself a, a lymphedema, a lymphoma, which takes his life. Oh my. So I bury him two days before Christmas, and I say to myself, what the heck am I going to do with myself? I never did anything alone. I was always with one group or another or a team. I never did anything alone. So I said to Google, <coughs> AIDS orphans, volunteer, Africa, those four words. And I got a little paragraph from Catholic Relief Service, a little paragraph from the Lutheran Missionary Society, and six pages of colored pictures of these wonderful looking black kids. 10 miles west of Nairobi, that a Jesuit had started because none of the children's homes wanted to take the positive kids. This was in 2002. So I wrote to the site and said, I'm newly widowed. I'm 64. I've always been a teacher. I love kids. Is there something I can do at your children's home? And the Jesuit wrote back and said, teachers and nurses, that's what we need. So contrary to my own mode of operation, I I gave my house to, I mean, I left my house with the young lady who was living with me getting her master's. I said, watch the dog, would you abuse the car? I'm gonna go to Africa, see if I can do this. So I went to Africa and I you, fell in love. You just... I got on a plane, I, it was very... You, you were, you were I was 64 to... years old. <laughs> So I'm 84 now, and I've lived 20 years in Kenya, and I love it. I, God bless that's you. home to me now. This, like, you know, when she fixed my coffee, she gave me six little packets. <laughs> and I said, see, that's what I'm telling you. I hate about America. There's too many choices. <laughs> you can't even get a cup of coffee without answering 10 questions. That's like, why I leave it just the way it comes. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So anyway, so what a what what a, what a gigantic leap of faith. Yeah, for well, you to do I that. said to God at thirty seven thousand feet, listen, you better take care of me because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I mean, you know what a goof I am. I, I've never. This has to be your doing, so make mm -hmm. it work. Right, right. So I walk in the arrival hall. There's 200 wonderful brown faces. Nobody's black in Kenya with my eyes that I can see. See, they're all this every shade of brown. Listen, this young lady, Maggie, I wanted to tell you, you have the most spectacular smile. You immediately you. made me feel good, and, and I, <laughs> that you're you're amazing. And I can't wait to hear your story. Thank you. So I'm done with my story. So. I You're went. far from done with your story, oh, my okay. friend. Okay. But that's okay because you have a lot still out there yet to come. Okay. But we'll come, we'll circle back. Okay. We'll circle back. Perfect. So, Thank you. but tell me just as a matter of um, segue. So let's, let's, let's go to Miss Laura next. How did you meet Laura and how did she come to be a part of this organization? Um, well, when I started at Kima Place, I thought I was in charge. But as a not-for-profit, you have to have a board and you have mm -hmm. to have, a, so we have a board of trustees over there who okay. watch everyday operations, hire, fire, that kind of thing. Okay. And a board of directors over here. And I always thought I was the director. Well, about five years in, uh, the board informed me that I was working for them <laughs> and they were gonna make the policy and they, and <clears throat> So, you know, my coming home for Advent and Lent was not enough to sustain us. It got to be that the, the children's home needed $25,000 a month to operate. Okay. So That's a heavy there's lift. There's no way I could raise that much money saying, mm -hmm. please help us on Sunday. So Miss Laura came <laughs> and she changed our year-end Christmas fundraiser from 100000 to 200000 just because she said she was going to. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, that's, listen, that's wonderful. And, you know, you give, Laura, you give off a vibe that, yes, that is just <laughs> incredible. And it, what makes it so is that you don't even realize you're doing it. I don't. <laughs> I don't. And that's, that's so cool, though. I mean, it really is because, it, you know, there's nothing forced. You know, you, oh, no, that I am who I am. You are who you are. And I'm the same way. I mean, I think, you know, the, the, I was always raised where the best thing that we can do for each other is to be ourselves. Yep. Right. Just mm -hmm. be individuals and understand that we're different. Mm -hmm. Right. Be the best you. you See can the be. differences, respect them and yeah. just focus on being the best you you can be. Mm -hmm. And I, you don't even, I don't even have to know you to know you do that. That's, <laughs> I you try give that off. So, so here, let's, let's talk about it. Are you, are you local? I you am. Born I am. and raised here? No, I'm actually from West Virginia. Um, so I'm from a really, really small town, but the best landmarks are right in the middle of Hagerstown, Maryland and Winchester, Virginia. I actually know the area. I do, because oh, I spend okay. a lot of time going back and forth. I had clients down in in, uh, in Martinsburg and all I'm, down in Martinsburg is one of the exits you can take to get to my parents' house. There they you still go. live okay. there, yes. Okay, yes. cool. So yeah, um, I'm originally from West Virginia. Um, I started school um, after high school. I, I went to Shepherd University in okay. Shepherdstown. Sure. And then I actually finished out my bachelor's degree at WVU. And right out of college, I was one of the very few fortunate people to get employment. I only had a delay from college to my mm -hmm. first job. And what was your major? It was uh, sociology, anthropology, and criminal okay. justice. That's a combination. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. That is a combination. Mm -hmm. I, I get sociology, anthropology, but where did criminal justice come in? You know, uh, I thought for the longest part of my life I was going to be a lawyer. Okay. I don't, I just thought I, I was, That's a wonderful background. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah thought, that's... Even when I was in college, I worked at a police department for several years. It was administrative. Um, okay, sure. And I realized I, I didn't, and then I interned at a magistrate court, okay. um, you know, and then I realized I didn't really like working on that side of the system. Um, it was very bureaucratic. It was very like, there wasn't a lot of room for compassion um, sure. when, through my mm -hmm. lens when I was working there. You know, people were coming in as victims of different types of crime and they sure. weren't really supported. Um, mm -hmm. So after college, I started working for a nonprofit in Pittsburgh that did comprehensive victim services. And okay. I was there for seven years. Oh, okay. um, so I did direct client work. Mm -hmm. Um, I worked within um, the PA Victims Compensation Assistance Program. So I okay. was a pro at that um, for a long time, had my own department. Um, so nice. I had a lot of uh, 
administrative backgrounds between working with a legislation program, mm -hmm. creating a program, hiring, supervising staff, okay. um, but a lot of direct client work. Mm -hmm. And then I switched to a, another local nonprofit where I started doing development work. Okay. Um, around about a year mark from that nonprofit, my mom um, unfortunately was very sick. She needed a lot more care mm -hmm. um, and I'm an advocate. It was criminal justice for before, but I am an advocate. So I like to yeah. help people in general. Yep. And I was not going to not help my mom. Sure. So sure. Became Absolutely. Her, yeah. So I became her medical advocate. Um, but what that needed, because they don't live local, they still live in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. I needed to travel a lot. Sure. Um, take her to doctor appointments, make sure mm -hmm. everything was being taken care of. So I needed something that was remote, that was part time, was perfect. And I found Hakima Place. And at the time, um, the previous executive director, who Kate was talking about, um, was looking for some help. So I met with him, came on board. I immediately got to meet Kate and got to hear her story and hear her talk at many churches. She was here for three months that time because it was mm. right after COVID. You were here for quite a bit of time. I was here for seven months during COVID. It was terrible. Yeah, she got stuck. Uh -huh. You know, when the grocery store is your the highlight of your week. <laughs> Of course, it was terrible for everybody. So. But no, it was bad. It was rough for everyone. And, and it was particularly hard on the nonprofit community. Mm, it was. It was. Yeah. It, it was funny. It, it, it took a dive for a little bit. And then people were like, oh, no, we want to like get involved with nonprofits. And then now that the world is kind of post-COVID, but we're not really, um, yeah. things are, are – the giving in nonprofit world is quite different still. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how I joined the Hakima family. Okay. Uh, I found it. It was it checked all of the like needed boxes, but it also I have to work for something I'm passionate about. I yeah. have to care about what I'm doing, and empowering young girls, making sure that they're safe. It brings in all of the things that I've built up through my, you know, careers, mm -hmm. my journeys through life into exactly what I wanted to do. Sure, and felt like a really natural fit. Kate and I got along really well from the get go, and I was able to go and visit. Kenya um, uh -huh. and, and last April. So I got to see the mission in action and that was so important. And I don't know, it just felt good. Felt like a great fit. And it's- Isn't it great when that happens? It is, it, it I mean, is. It's just, it it's just such a good feeling when yeah. you just know this is this is right. This is where I'm supposed to be. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, it, and then from there, you know, um, I I think it keeps me motivated to just keep mm -hmm. working and setting those, those landmarks, those goals for us and making sure that they're achievable, you know, and- I don't like to not achieve goals, so I like push really hard for them. <laughs> okay, well, so. that, and, and that's 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 phenomenal. And I think, the, well, I have to say one thing. Um, my Fletch would would be very upset with me if hearing what you just said, if I didn't say it's a great day to be a mountaineer, because he's a mountaineer and yes. that's like his big deal. So <laughs> yes. you have to say that. You know, we can't say the stuff about Pitt that he says, but. It's a great day to be a mountaineer. We'll leave it at that. It's quite interesting yeah. to go out when there's a pit game on. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I think is funny, and we're going to get a little bit off topic. I went, he, I went with my Fletch to a um, to a WVU game. Mm. I think they were playing Oklahoma State or somebody, and nothing to do with Pitt, but that they're still, <laughs> yeah, like, it's just yeah. still attacking Pitt. Like it's like, wow, you know. But anyway, so. So and now and you just mentioned your your husband's a Pittsburgh firefighter, he city is. city firefighter. He That's is. awesome. We're both in the community of uh, uh, giving back to our communities, mm -hmm. making them better, leaving the world a better place than when we left it. Um, so he worked at DC for a few years for the mm -hmm. National Human Trafficking Hotline, oh, okay. and then he came back. He was a caretaker taker for his uncle for a while, oh. and now he's a firefighter. So so he's got that same. Heart. He's got the same thing. Yep, yeah. yep. Like. Kate found Fletch, I found Mark, and yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. I love it. It's wonderful when that happens. Mm -hmm. I, I have one of those. She's, uh, you know, that's a, that's a whole different story, but mm -hmm. saved my life. Saved my mm -hmm. life. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's a, it's a, it's hard to even talk about sometimes. Yes. So, well, Kate, that brings us to you, young lady. So you um, were growing up in Kenya. When did you, when did you become associated with Hakima Place. How old were you? I was 11 years old. Okay. In 2000, it was early 2006 okay. when I joined Hakima Place. Okay. Yeah. Second group. 
We started in 05. She came in 06. Okay, okay. So what what has this organization meant to you in your life? Uh, it has meant everything to me because um, had I not gone to Hekima, I don't think I would have had maybe a high school I would have had high school education because okay. um, at home in my village, most people just go up to eighth grade. And okay. that's because there is um, free primary education. But when you get to high school, there's some fees you pay. So most people can't mm -hmm. earn that. So that's okay. the only far they can go. But Hekima gave me the opportunity to go up to college which was, which changed my life. I changed the way I think. It has changed the That's way wonderful. I look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm so grateful because also um, with Hekima, like I got to see life differently. Mm -hmm. I was only used to the village life, the way people live in the village. And how many people lived in your village? Hmm. Quite many. <laughs> there are many, but I, 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 I don't have the right number, so okay. I just don't want to say. Just it. curious. So, yeah. no, I was just... <laughs> but probably maybe a hundred thousand. Yeah. That's yeah. quite a village. Yeah. 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 But. And that's why I wanted to ask you that. I'm sorry. Mm. Because when you say village, mm. you know, we in the U.S. think small. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So a hundred thousand, like. Mm. This community that we're in here in Cannesburg mm. is less than 10,000 people. Ooh. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's surrounding communities, okay, that they blend. But Cannesburg itself is probably right around 10,000, maybe a little bit less. So when you say village mm. here, we automatically oh. think. Okay. What I mean by the village, in Kenya, there's town. Uh -huh. Then there's the rural area. So the rural is called the village. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. good. Well, see, that's that's I learned something. That's mm. that's, that's that's fantastic. Well, Kenya yeah. only has two cities, doesn't yeah. it? No. Nairobi it has, has five million people. Mombasa has a couple of million. There's Nakuru City right now. Nakuru just was elevated to be a city. Okay. And, and what's the fourth? Kisumu. 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 Yeah. yeah. Ah. But everything else is called Ushag which is the village. up country, <laughs> where everybody's grandparents came from and yeah. still live. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So so you spent from time, from you were 11 until graduation from high school? No, college. College, college. Yeah. now, oh, okay. So what did, what did you study in college? Uh, well, I did a certificate in customer service and uh, I joined one of the airlines in Kenya and I did cabin crew, air hostessing. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Thank Since you. she was tiny, she wanted, to, I said, why do you want to be a waitress at 30,000 feet <laughs> in the sky? Why don't you drive the plane? She said, no, 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 I want to be cabin crew. But that is so cool. And, and you know, again, you know, everybody has a different perception of things, yeah. right? And when you, when you look at the average the average person here in this country mm -hmm. doesn't like to fly. Yeah. They don't mm -hmm. like air travel to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's stressful. It's complicated. You know, it's scary. It, it's scary. You're exactly right. And believe it or not, people don't like the cabin experience because mm -hmm. it's tight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, I'm, I'm six feet tall, but I'm all legs. Right. Mm -hmm. I cannot. Uh, that's why I always volunteer to sit on the on the, the window, the emergency aisle mm -hmm. so I can have so I can stretch my legs out. But so it's it's that's a that's a big deal. Believe it or not, it's a big deal. No, but you know, actually, what people don't know with cabin crew, your work is to provide safety mm -hmm. in the cabin, and not that's like exactly the right. service is just a bonus. It's a bonus, like, right? Yeah, you right. don't want to travel fifteen hours on an empty stomach. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. So actually, true. during our training year, we only did like a week of the service part. Everything else was safety, safety, safety. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah Aww, because you don't know what to come about up. the eight hours of makeup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this entire day, day on how to fix your face. <laughs> really? I was horrified. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fascinating you because so gorgeous. No, she I mean, to... listen, you are stunningly beautiful. Thank you. So, and, and I and I think that when you when <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> 
Yeah. She's but, stunningly beautiful without makeup. Well, that's what I, I was going to say well. that, but I don't want to get into. I, I get to watch. I get to walk that creepy old guy line, so yeah. I don't cross over that. So, <laughs> when you're when you're my age, that, that, that sneaks up on you. You got to be careful. But yeah, I don't. You wouldn't need makeup at all to. Yeah. So, but so that's that's fascinating. Now, do you? Is it what, what airline is it? Is it is it a Kenyan national airline? What, mm -hmm. what airline do you work with? Yes, it's a Kenyan national airline. Okay. It, yeah, yeah. It's the biggest airline in Kenya. Yeah, but I don't work with them currently because uh, they've not been hiring for some years now mm -hmm. because of some problems with the airlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Bankruptcy so... Bankruptcy was their problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she went through all issue. of that training and then was never... Actually, they had started rehiring in 2020, the beginning of 2020, and mm -hmm. then in March, COVID happened in Kenya. So they closed down everything. Oh, yeah, and they've not rehired people again. But uh, due to that, so I decided to venture into a small business like where I use social media to earn a living. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah, me yeah. about that. That's I'm I'm curious. Um, I saw furniture. So how that came about? I was oh, during like COVID times. Mm -hmm. I everybody was home and uh, there was nothing to do like just staying in the house. And I thought to myself, I love to watch youtube videos okay. and i'm always on youtube and i decided to, like i love watching people do decorate their spaces people like making their spaces beautiful uh -huh. look clean so during that time i discovered that so many people used wallpapers and it wasn't a big thing in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It was just like something Starting, new in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and I was like, hmm, the, the walls look really nice with the wallpaper. What does this mean? And I went to Google <laughs> and I checked businesses to do with no capital in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> and wallpaper business was among the suggestions okay. and i was like okay so i just watched these on youtube and here they're giving me suggestions and i was like but where can i get the wallpapers in kenya so i googled where to get wallpaper on wholesale price in kenya and they gave me an option so i got the number from there and i went to visit the place and I was surprised it was a huge space with so many different designs of wallpapers and they were selling them at wholesale price for people who wanted to resell them. So that's where my business started. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's that's fantastic. It's wonderful. Yes. I mean, and, you know, <laughs> well, listen, that's I, I wish you all the best in that. That is that's that's tremendous. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, so let's let's circle back for a minute. So when when we stopped, when you when you stopped, you uh, were 64 years old and mm -hmm. jumped on a plane and mm -hmm. on a whim, basically, and and flew to Kenya. So when you landed, what, um, what was the first thing you did? What what? How did, how did this all materialize? Well, I went there to help in the orphanage I saw pictures of. It mm -hmm. was a very well done uh, website. And so a, a fellow took me and I said, uh, Lord, if I'm being kidnapped, you know, come with me. Because <laughs> I was the only white person in the hall. So and there you're, were you're 200 take, of us. And, I mean, um, what a leap. So I said, okay, Lord, come on. You had to be in charge. <clears throat> so I got out and I went there. And the following Sunday, we, we were having mass. It was a Catholic place. We were having mass in the schoolhouse. And two of the mothers, they did it on the SOS model, small houses in a circle, mm -hmm. each one consisting of a family and a mom. Okay. So I was assigned to Cottage C. <clears throat> and I was walking down to the school for church, and two of the mothers said, oh, you're so smart. And I thought, they don't even know me. Like, how do they know I was the valedictorian? I didn't know that the British say smart. 
when you look good. It's not about your intellectual <laughs> ability. Right, It's right. about your outfit. That's okay, okay. So okay. when I learn, I, oh, okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, I worked there for two years. Okay. And I was in charge of volunteers. And people volunteered from all over the world there. And then one fine day, I got a phone call from the director, this Italian priest, and he said, I want you to put two people out of the volunteer house because I have two board members coming. I said, how can I do that, Dag? He said, well, I want the board members to live on the compound with the kids. I said, oh, I understand that, but what if they have no place else to go? He said, well, they can go to the coast. I said, what if they don't have the money, Dag? In conscience, I don't know how I can ask them. They give us a couple months of their life and they volunteer. Yeah. How can I do that? And he said, Kate, I'll not have any back talk. And I thought, I haven't heard that phrase since I was 10 years old. It was my <laughs> mother talking. So I got mad and I said, well, take my bedroom then. I'll move off campus in anger. He said, okay, hung up. So I moved off. Now the Holy Spirit is very clever. And so I was put down in a building that I knew existed, and I'm renting a bedroom in this building, and 20 feet away from me is a three-story stone house that hasn't been used for 10 years. So the Holy Spirit says, I used to think good ideas were my own. They're not. Not even close. Good ideas are not my own at all. No. What, if I could get some money and put a board together, could we bring kids to that building? Because you'll never get a family that needs three floors mm -hmm. with a wraparound pool. It was a wonderful looking building. And the first 22 kids went in that building. I came home, went to my pastor in St. Thomas More. He had a brother who was in Papua New Guinea for 35 years working with the poor. I said, if I start a children's home, can I come back every year and do a second collection? He said, yeah. I went next door to St. Louis I said to Father Tom, if, can I, if I start a children's home, can I come back? <laughs> and he said, uh, my people are going to kill me, Kate, if I do one more second collection. I have the bishop, I have the pope, I have... Mm -hmm. So he said, you want a cup of coffee? Yeah, thank you. At the end of the cup of coffee, he said, would March 15th be okay? <laughs> so I had two churches, and in two second collections... They raised thirty thousand dollars. Wow! Fifteen and fifteen, big parishes, generous people, mm -hmm. able to yeah. help, willing to help. Yes. So with thirty thousand, I went back and we took the first, what was supposed to be the first ten kids, turned out to be twelve. The second ten kids turned out to be fourteen, and she was in the second batch. So, twenty-two kids filled that house. Then I had to move out of the house I was in. Twenty kids filled that house. Then the guy sent his married son away with his wife and two kids and 20 kids in the third house on the property. All the properties in Karen, which is the Karen Blixen place for mm -hmm. out of Africa lady. Okay. So when we had 65 kids, we started looking for land. So we found 10 acres way out behind God's back where there's more cows than people. Mm -hmm. And that's where we live now. So we bought the 10 acres. We, we changed the designation of these five. It went from agriculture to domestic. Okay. And these five are still the farm. Okay. So we have cows. We have 10 cows. We drink and sell the milk. Are, are you self-sustaining? Mm -hmm. And we have, I think, 400 hens. And we eat and sell the eggs. And over here we grow kale and cabbage and onions and peppers and mm -hmm. blah, 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 like that. So that's, that's amazing. So we started in this rental place. We were five years. And in 2010, two days before Christmas, oh, that's when we buried Fletch. Hmm. Yeah. Two days before Christmas, we moved to the new place, which is right on the edge of the escarpment. You know where the Great Rift Valley mm -hmm. ripped apart the top half of Africa? We're right okay. on the escarpment. It's okay. gorgeous. It is beautiful. When she picked, when we were, she picked me up at the airport, and one of the first things that we did was, you yeah. were like, "Well, let me show you the rift." I mean, you mm -hmm. pull out of our driveway, you go up two seconds, and you're right there. I was it like, is sort of crying. It's, it's just, it takes your breath away. It's, it's just. It's, it's 
Well, Africa is a beautiful place. And, and mm. you know, again, it's a much misunderstood place. Mm. Mm. You know, so. outside of the continent. And, you know, I, I look at life started in Africa. Life started exactly on the right. continent. All That's life started exactly on the right. continent, right? Mm -hmm. And every single one of us. Everybody mm -hmm. here, everybody in the United States, Canada, Australia, doesn't matter where you're at. Every single human walking on this earth can trace their roots back That's to the exactly continent of Africa. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly so I have right. a colleague, Diane and I, who I love dearly. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. He is, uh, he's Nigerian. He's from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> when you think about, and, and this is for you, Maggie, and, and I don't want to put you on a spot. So in your eyes, being Kenyan, mm -hmm. Like, like you said, my friend Ifanyi is Nigerian. What differences, what would a, the average U.S. citizen that goes to, what, what differences would, would I see between Kenya and Nigeria? Kenya and Nigeria, Kenya yes. and America. Kenya and Nigeria. If I go to Africa and I, and I travel to those two countries, mm. what differences would I find? First things first, Nigeria has so many people. Yeah. <laughs> there are like about 200 million people. Is it, Lagos is, is and we're 50 15, million. 15 and or 20 million yeah, itself. Yeah, 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 only 50 million. Maybe you would see a difference in personality. Like Nigerians are go-getters. Like mm -hmm. they go out there and get whatever they want. Kenyans, well, we try, but we are like, we, we shy you off. <laughs> you lay back a little bit more. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 sure, sure. Yeah. And Even Kukuyus? Yes, we are. Nigerians are way... Are they? Yeah. But Their no. movies are mean. <laughs> <laughs> they are, but now the problem comes with that because they are a bit loud. You know, they are very loud, which is not <laughs> common in Kenya. Like, you will rarely meet somebody very loud. Sure. But there are not like many differences, maybe, and I can't say much because I've not been to Nigeria, so I don't know what they do there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only know what we do in Nairobi and what I see Nigerians in Nairobi doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, that's 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 kind of that's kind of helpful because you know there's differences between. Native West Virginians and mm -hmm. Pennsylvanians, for example, and mm -hmm. we're border states. We're all American citizens, but there, there are differences in culture and mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. in East Coast to West Coast and all those things. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, there, there are major differences. So is, is this your first trip to the U.S.? No, it's not. I've been to the U.S. before, like five years ago in 2017. Okay. Yeah, I was here for one month. Yeah. What's your impression of this country? There's so many opportunities here. Mm -hmm. First things first. <laughs> um, and I think um, people here, the way people here live, obviously it's quite different from the way we live back home. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, according to me, I think people are a lot nicer here, but mom would oh, say otherwise. I would say the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I would say the opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And, um, for, but for me, what, what I think is the coolest thing about this place, you can just be anything you want. Like there's not a Very lot of true. opportunity at home. Okay. The, it's not easy to get a job at home. So mm -hmm. you have to create the job for yourself. As you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think the system here, the way the system is set up right here, it, it helps you to succeed mm -hmm. while back at home you have to create the system for yourself right yeah okay I mean, even talking about and, and kate talks about this a lot mm -hmm. sorry i'm stealing your your Go right ahead. <laughs> you know um when kate will talk about the level of poverty you know in kenya if you mm -hmm. if you start googling like the poverty line in Kenya, sure. you know, you'll see stats about a majority of people aren't just living in poverty. They're living in extreme poverty. Right. And I think when you're talking about that to Americans or to the U.S., people will say, well, th we have medical assistance. We have, you know, uh, food welfare, stamps. food stamps, mm -hmm. you know, it, low income housing opportunities. Right. You know, we have scholarships where if you're under you mm -hmm. can go to school still, you know, oh, we yeah. have all of these structures in place. In Kenya, there's not um, any of that. Yeah. So y y talking about opportunities, talking about the work that, that Kate has envisioned for Hakima and has 
incredibly made this huge impact there. Mm-hmm. Is, is allowing those avenues for opportunity, allowing access to education, making okay. sure that there's access to education and a quality right. one as well. Maggie had mentioned public schools that are free. They're overcrowded crowded mm. classrooms. You're 70 not- kids. Who can teach 70 kids? Yeah, you yeah. can't do that. I mean, yeah. that's- It's impossible. We, we, we feel 35 kids in a classroom is way too many. Yep. Yeah. You know, and- I can't even imagine. And again, I, I was raised by teachers and, you know, I, yeah, 70s just- mm-hmm. It's, it's overwhelming. So even if you're going to school, you're not really receiving a getting the quality qual- right. education, you know, right. and, and even the way that they teach there is different than here. So having access to education, allowing or educating the opportunities that are available, mm-hmm. it makes a huge difference. You know, like Maggie had mentioned, being able to go to school consistently, going to high school, sure. going, getting, you know, degrees and in, in college mm-hmm. and university that all opened doors for her to become a business owner herself. You right, know? Um, right. Had that, those things not taken place, which they do in America, like if I didn't go to school, my parents mm. are, you know, being hauled in going, hey, your kid's sure. not in school. Yeah. Mm. Sure, and, absolutely right. And that's not how it is no, there. No, it doesn't happen you know? like that. That's well, it's becoming even... like that though. Yeah. Okay. They're so starting progress, to make- progress then. Par- you're yeah, you're, so you're seeing in your time there, you're seeing progress. It's wonderful. The country is growing. The country was under British rule for 90 years. So it has only been a democracy, a place where you can choose to do or not to do since 19, for the last 68 years. That's all the older it is. Wow. So if, if Kenya seems like it's stumbling or falling, I think to myself, when America was 68 years old, we were still blowing up banks <laughs> we were, and robbing stagecoaches. We were in what? big trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, were, we mean, had come this far in 68 yeah, years. Yeah. It so, takes a lot to put that infrastructure in place. It does. Yeah. And, and, you know, Laura, listen, from just when you look at, when you talk about poverty lines and, and, mm-hmm. and being poor and not having access to, you know, when I, when I think about the basic necessities of life, right? Mm-hmm. I think about access to clean water, mm-hmm. clean air, food, mm-hmm. clothing, shelter, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I'm certain that there are a lot of people in Kenya that don't have access to those, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of people in Appalachia, right? Yes. Close yeah. to where we're sitting right now that don't have that access mm-hmm. either. Yeah. So it's, it's a global situation. Yeah. Absolutely. And I would think that, you know, you guys have traveled internationally, obviously, but I would think that the perspective of the United States Mm -hmm. and us Mm -hmm. being American citizens is quite different than what it actually is, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? The, the comparing like, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, even when I, when I got there, I'm, I'm, everyone there is still so full of hope and, Mm -hmm. and here I think we're so preoccupied with so many other things mm-hmm. that we get weighed down even more. Right. Even if you aren't struggling, you know, right. financially or, or you have a like, safe place to live, like you're still weighed down. Sure. No, I get it. Yeah. Yes. Everyone there is still so full of hope. And and when we are encountering those, some of the cases that we, mm-hmm. we have with some of the girls that have come to us, you have to think about the level of despair that have made some choices in that, mm-hmm. that line mm-hmm. to kind of bring some of the girls to us, you know? Right. It's just a different way of thinking. It's a different way of living. Mm-hmm. And right. Kate, our, our take it edu- from here. Our <laughs> education director asked me to come to his village, which was deep in the Rift Valley. So I go okay. with him. And the women in that village walk 16 miles, 16 kilometers every day to get water. And they fill jerry cans, which are going to weigh more than 20 pounds, which they strap, they strap to the back of their head and they bow down and they go 16 back. So I said to him, I see two of your young men have, uh, have uh, motorcycles. Why don't you make them go get the water? And they could put a jerry can on either side. He said, madam, that's women's work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the ancient traditions right. don't allow for progress, you know? <laughs> and that's something to that's- To me, it just made good sense. Near and dear to Diane and I, if we're in we're in the water side of the engineering business, and mm. that's what we do, mm-hmm. you know, water systems. You know, it, it boggled my mind when I first got into this, and not just Kenya, but there are so many countries. I think, isn't it, Diane, correct me if I'm wrong, like 90% of Earth's population does not have access to clean water. 
I mean, yeah. it's it's an it's an it's an mm. outrageous number, right? You know, if it's ninety. Oh it's a lot. It's high, and and I have to Google that, Nick. <laughs> but, it, but it's a it's a re, it's yeah, a ridiculous. Of the water's not like that. Right, mm. and that could be the number. I could be confusing yeah. that, but ninety percent of the Earth's water, when you think about ocean, is not yeah drinkable mm -hmm. water. It's not yeah. drinking water, but. The majority of the world's population does not have access to clean water. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a borehole on our property, and it gives us 10,000 liters of water per hour. Per hour? So we piped it down to nice. the front gate and said to our neighbors, get your water here. So a jerry can that's that is amazing. Big, we were charging three cents, three <laughs> shillings for, a, for 20 liters. And then COVID came. I said... We have to stop asking them to pay for their water. They can't pay for their water. They could buy flour. They could have dinner yeah. with all those yeah. three shillings. <clears throat> so sure. we still, we're still giving it free. Because that's a river. Mm -hmm. 10,000 liters per hour, that's, that's a, a lot. river. That's a lot of water. So when we built a school for our neighbors on the three acres next to us, we piped from our borehole over to 10,000 liter underground water source and now we have 230 community kids in our school including our own 40 who walk through the farm go over to school and it, it's just miraculous i mean uh -huh. it god is, is it, it so generous is. and god god sends these wonderful people into our lives and some of them are listening mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have a million dollars spent on seven buildings on the orphanage side uh -huh. and two million dollars for this wonderful school that's unlike anything near it. That's incredible. It's colorful. There's trees and flowers. It has life skills. There's a beauty shop, computer lab, art studio, counseling. That's There's amazing. no more smacking people when they misbehave. You send them up to Sister Dorothy and she counsels them. It's very cool. It's wonderful. Now we want to be a high school as well. Because if we're a high school, wow. we can keep our orphan girls. We can keep them till the end of school. Now we have to send them home. And we don't know what home looks like. Right. Some of them are with us because home is the problem. So how do, how do you find your girls or do they find you? How, do, how does that, that <clears throat> process work? In the early years, they found us. People would knock on the gate and say, my sister died. I have four of my own. I can't send her to the school. <clears throat> now, the children's department, Kenya, has grown. The children's department calls us and says, somebody left a baby in the forest and she was taken to the hospital. Can you take her? Our newest baby was laundry number 161. In 18 years, we've helped 161 children. She was two days old, born on Friday, left in a church pew on Monday. Wow. And we are blessed wow. to have her. So the one before that was two weeks old. The one before that was two months old. We've been in a drought. We're in a rural area now. Mm -hmm. Everybody is agricultural. Yeah. Every single individual grows whatever they can grow mm -hmm. near their house. They not to sell, but to eat. To eat, yeah. <clears throat> sure. My night guard came to me and said, Mom, he's up by Ethiopia. I used to have thirteen cow moms, ten of them are dead. There's no grass. There's no grass. Because he lives right on the equator. There's no grass. Wow. No water, no grass. To, to go back to like what we were talking about, you know, the, the lever of poverty, the, the degree of, of the, the girls that come to us sometimes, the decisions that those mothers have to make mm -hmm. to kind of bring it. It's heart-wrenching. You know, it's, it's, you know. And we're so fortunate for all of the supporters that we have here in the United States. We have some internationally mm -hmm. as well to continue to support our mission because we're able to continue to take these girls. You know, we are a safe haven for them. But more than that, we're not just Kate. Something I love that Kate did is she designed Hakima as a family. When you mm -hmm. walk in, you don't feel like you're going into like this very institutional, institutional, institutional yeah. like clinical. You go there and everyone is just like, welcome, you're home now. You know, mm -hmm. I walk through the gate and yeah. and they're like, you're, you're home, you're home, you're not a guest, you're here, and we're so happy you're here. And everyone is just smiling and so happy and the girls are thriving. So you hear the stories of why they came to us in the first place and then you meet them and they're smiling and they're happy and they're doing phenomenally. And because of the supporters that we have here in the United States, we're able to keep doing this and we're mm -hmm. able to meet the need. Kate mentioned the drought. 
you know, we're talking about the poverty line and all of the struggles that have continued to kind of occur. And we're still able to meet that need. We're, we opened another house for a while. One of our houses wasn't open because we didn't need it. Okay. We need it now. And it's fully open. And now we're almost back to capacity again. You know, we're, we're able to provide that service. And it's all because of the support that we have here. Pittsburghers are wonderfully generous. Pittsburgh they really is... Are. It's ground zero for, for this. Yes, for, yes, it you is. know, if you're a not, we that's what we do, and, and that's how we were raised. You know, mm -hmm. I was I was raised to give. You know what I mean? And 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 when I when I felt that tap on my shoulder, you felt it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you answered it quickly. I I it, it scared me, mm -hmm. right? It scared me. So I I I I, I ignored Delayed it. Delayed a little. I ignored it. I ignored it. I ignored it. And in ignoring that, okay, and trying to be something that other than than that, trying to be something that I wasn't, I lost who I was. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about despair and those things, mm -hmm. you know, I had everything in the world going for me. I had a good job, I had a career, I had a family, all those things. But I still, every day, every single day, I felt that, that mm -hmm. like there was no a hope. A little gap. Right, right. So when I finally, and I don't recommend doing it this way, but, but I just, like burned it all to the ground. I just just mm. completely just landed bam on, on rock bottom on my on my backside, right? So and again, I don't recommend that. That's there's easier ways to do it. But it was in that place, in that dark place where right. I finally said, okay. That's where the light shines best. Isn't That's it? exactly right. Yeah. And, and absolutely. And I think and I know now that my journey had to go there. Mm right? For me to get to here. Yeah. You know, so what, I, this is one of the reasons why I love so much what you guys are doing. It, it's just, it, it's amazing. It's totally amazing. And there are, so how, let me ask you this young lady, you're, 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 how do, how would the average person, the average Pittsburgher, the mm -hmm. average person, you know, cause there's like my mom and three, four people are going to watch this, right? <laughs> so how would those four people and my mom Mm -hmm. support the organization? What, what What's the easy easy way or the hard way? How's, what's the best way to do it? This is the beauty of Hikima. There are so many different ways that people can support us. You know, there is the obvious. Go to our website, make a donation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you want to do a, a recurring one, that's even better. <laughs> okay. um, you know, sign up for our newsletter. Stay in touch with us. Follow us along as we continue to do the work. Sponsor that an individual child. Well, I was getting there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, sponsoring, you know, again, meeting that need, having the increased intake of, of girls coming to live with us, become a sponsor. And being a sponsor okay. means you're committing to that girl for the length of her stay with us. And it's so affordable to us Americans. It is $750 for a full year. And okay. that's covering so much. It's ensuring access to education. It's making sure that we're taking care of the and whole can, child. Can you pay that monthly? You can pay yeah. it monthly at sixty-two fifty. If you want to do a co-sponsor and team up with another person, it's thirty-two fifty a month. Thirty. To, that's it. To basically <clears throat> save a child's life. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, that's you know, it, and that sounds a little dramatic, but it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, it's it it's one hundred percent the mm -hmm. truth. Sixty-two bucks. Mm -hmm. You can you can literally save a child's life. Absolutely. See, and here she is. Yeah. And there's there's your proof. <laughs> there's your proof. Yeah. And she, she's remarkable. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and I think that when when you now, I'm out and about, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm out and I do business development, which means I'm out in the community. Oh yeah, all the time. I haven't heard of you guys before. Hmm. So how can we help you spread the word. That's another way to get involved. Follow us on social media. Okay. Share the things that we are sharing on social media. Welcome us back on your podcast. We would love to continue to give you updates. Um, if oh, there's and other... we love that. And we, that's yeah. definitely a thing because we love to do that. And um, we like to check back in mm. with, with guests yes. that we have. We just did, Nick just pulled together a compilation of the first 51 shows that we've done. And yeah. looking back, things jump out at you, mm -hmm. right? It's like, you. well, first of all, we've gotten a lot better at this than we were the first oh. few. It was kind of, oh my goodness. But, uh, but the Is things, somebody going to watch this? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think my mother would have struggled to watch the first yeah. week or something, the first week. But, but, but the thing of it is, you pick up things in conversations just mm -hmm. going back and there, there are people we've started to think about having a few folks come back and give us updates on, yes. you know, on their journey and how things are going. Mm -hmm. And we definitely want you guys to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's 
we're right now, this is what I've been working on is trying to really expand our exposure, you know, bring in mm -hmm. more people into the work that we're doing. Um, when Kate was here um, in December, we were on a Bethel Park television television show called Empower You. It was wonderful. We we had so much With exposure Denise. from that. Denise, yeah. Denise's yeah. husband, Vince, is my cousin. Oh my Denise gosh, Denise has been on the podcast. Denise has been on the podcast. She's wonderful. <laughs> yes, she's it was, wonderful. It was a great interview yes. with her. Yeah, that's awesome. She yeah. she has a great little show there. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It was it was so much fun. It was my background. I say everybody who's a person of faith, mm -hmm. if they said to their imam or their rabbi, mm -hmm. or their priest or pastor. I met this great group that does wonderful mission work in Africa. Can we help them? Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely going to, to get do that. A, that is... I'm dying to get a, a synagogue, because all our churches are Christian. Mostly really? all of them are Catholic. I would love to get a synagogue mm -hmm. and a... A mosque. And a, a mosque, yeah. Well, we Wouldn't might be able to help you with fun? that. That would yeah. be amazing. Ooh, that, would that, be would, cool. that would be amazing. Yeah, pulling us into these other, uh, making us connections to mm -hmm. new partners. You know, we have such a loyal partnership with so many different churches, but mm -hmm. we're always looking for new ones. Corporate sure. sponsors as well. That's something that we haven't really expanded on. We're looking for so many corporate sponsors. Ha <laughs> ha, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, but we, one thing that we do at GPI, and, and I would I would highly encourage you to take a look at GPI's website because mm -hmm. it, again, not only do you, does your mission align with the podcast, but with our firm, uh, Greenman Peterson Incorporated, GPI, mm -hmm. um, you're, you guys are right there. Mm -hmm. It's like you were sent to us, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. We, so when you think about the scope of who we are and diversity, inclusion, belonging, all mm -hmm. those things, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And when you've been doing things, something as long as I have, you tend to get a little cynical, you know, because mm -hmm. every firm that looks like ours um, talks the talk. But not all of them not walk that talk. Absolutely. GPI does that. Mm -hmm. oh, this is something yes. that's a, it's a core belief, mm -hmm. and we really um, we we really walk that talk. And so Diane and I will be we'll be discussing this when we talk about our giving for the moving forward because oh, you guys are you. again a perfect perfect fit. Mm -hmm. You know it's wonderful. Uh, I belong to a ladies prayer group. We all served on the parish council at St. Thomas More, and when our term was over. We said, hey, we're having too much fun. Let's stay together. So the six of us all stayed together. And we call the Holy Spirit Gracie, the feminine face of God. You know? you God go. said, let us make them in our image. Mm -hmm. so, right. <clears throat> exactly right. That is very cool. And what was I going to say about Gracie? I lost the thought. See, don't be 84. No <laughs> fun being 84. I forget where I was going with that. It'll come mm -hmm. to you. But Gracie's good enough. I could just end it. That's, that's, that's really cool. I love that because, you know, w growing up in the Catholic Church, it, it's not a, it wasn't at that time in the 60s and 70s a female friendly place, mm -hmm. right? And, and I don't You know any lady priests still uh -huh. today? Still today. Uh -huh. Still uh -huh. today, right? And, and you know, I think I, I always found it fascinating. And I, some of my friends that, that I grew up with, you know, social media, one of them put our first Holy Communion picture, our class, our picture in it, oh. and shared it. And I'm like, wow. And started to think back about mm -hmm. some, about certain mm -hmm. things. And, you know, what happened for me was when I got into high school in, in summers, there was a church basketball league around the area. Mm -hmm. And the Catholic church didn't belong because they had a regular Catholic league, right? So good friend of mine, um, what he, he had his team, he played for the Gallatin Sunnyside AME church, African American Episcopal church. Mm -hmm. Right. And he said, we, we need you, man. We need you. Come on a team. So the only rule of the league was that you had to attend one service a month at mm -hmm. that church. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I talked to my dad and he said, yeah, seems. Yeah, my no mother would have said, that. "Don't you dare!" <laughs> exactly. So, but, but but again, my my parents were hippies, so they they went they went with it. But <laughs> so so I went, and I went to that first service. I absolutely loved it. Right. Wow. So I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute. It's so incarnational, isn't it? Exactly. They pray exactly. with their whole body and exactly. soul. That's what and, I love. And, and listen, they they were so happy, like. When you go to when you go to Catholic Mass, I mean, you know, I'm Shut not telling you anything. You don't know, <laughs> sit yes, down. Yes. Stand up at this point. Sit down at this point. Kneel at this point. And yeah. don't like don't deviate. Yeah. These people were happy. They were singing, and and I'm like, this was 
Hey, you man, know, brother. I'm 16 years old and I'm thinking, what the hell? Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. so, but that just kind of opened my eyes. And I talked to my father about it and my mother, but I talked to my father and I was like, you know, because my father was baptized Catholic. He was, he was well, he, he, he would have been 90 this year. He was born in 1933, but they never practiced. He didn't know. So he's, he's in, I think he was about 10 years old and he's in school and he had a teacher and was asking all the students where they went to church, mm. right? And he was panicked because he knew she was going to get to him and he had no idea. He never went to church. Mm. So he didn't know what religion, he didn't know anything about it, right? So he left school that day because he knew the next day she was going to ask him. So he walked up the street and I wish he was here. God rest his soul. He passed a few years ago, but mm. um, he said, the street coming out of the school came to a T. Okay. And there he was said, some church there. He looked to the left and looked to the right. And he looked over here and there was Mary Mother Sorrows Church. He walked over, knocked on the door, and the priest was Father Nick, answered the answered the door, said, What do you want? He said, I want to go to church. He said, Come on. Went in that day, served mass. Okay. <laughs> so and he served mass every, every like just almost daily until he graduated from high school and went to college. Hmm. So, but he had no idea he was Catholic, but you know, he just, he just happened to knock on that door. So years later, when I was talking to him about that, he said, he said, you know how you became Catholic? And I, I assumed I was, you know, you guys were Catholic. I was baptized Catholic. He said that, he told me that story. And he said that day when I got there, he said, if I had turned right, there was a synagogue, you'd be Jewish. Aww. He said, he chose to turn left. He said, so his point was. That was Gracie. Explore, exactly. Yes. Explore, explore and, and, and learn about mm -hmm. life and about mm -hmm. different cultures and things. Mm -hmm. And that was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Yeah. You know, cool. so it was like, cool. it, it, was, it was very cool. It was very cool. But, you know, it, it's, uh, so back to you guys. Let's, um, what? where are we at, Nick? The I was going to say, the last way to get involved with Hakeem is to volunteer, because I know we're looking for volunteers to also visit Kenya. Visit. We have yeah. a guest house. There is, it's a, really? got a kitchen, a living room. There's, there's, you know, different rooms. There's, there's plenty of space and it's to visit Kenya and volunteer. Listen, Nick. You're welcome. <laughs> Join yeah. us. Yeah. You can take your gear. You could document. We could do a doc our document. I'm going in August you if you want to come with oh, me. Okay. You can document the whole thing. You can yeah. come in and record Nick's everything. Nick's up, up for stuff. Listen, yeah. yeah, he can record it. We can do we've been mm -hmm. talking about doing a documentary. It's very mm -hmm. funny. Oh, Listen. it's a perfect time. Yeah. August twenty second to about oh, September sixth. Come you with us. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> no, I think I have something that ends like either that day or like just before that day. We'll just go from there straight there. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I'm for a month and a half. I have to do some schedule. Just think that all the money your mother will save not having to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. I'm saying I'm in. I can do it. No, uh, I, think, yeah. I think that's a tremendous opportunity. And, it and is. It's amazing i mean oh yeah. my gosh getting to yes oh my I gosh play, i played with the the girls we did dress up you know you helped them they weren't in school when i was there so i, uh -huh. I got out of having to help them with homework mm -hmm. but they started my last day and you know that's an opportunity helping just around the grounds in general mm -hmm. there's so much to do and you're experiencing learn such to a milk a cow thing. learn to collect yeah. eggs <laughs> under the butt of uh, 600 hens we also do take volunteers here in the u.s it's not as exciting though. <laughs> <laughs> you're only working with me. We're doing events, you know. Yeah. Um, you're helping me with administrative things, but going to Kenya, ooh, that's that's the. Yep. Yep. Now, yeah. is that is that something that is sponsored by the organization? There's specific it is times, not. or you can, can anytime. somebody can go anytime? anytime. 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 Twenty bucks a night. You can't beat that for bed and breakfast. <laughs> wow. You cannot beat it. Twenty bucks, and you're gonna feed me too. Yeah. Uh huh. Of course, you better bring peanut butter for the nights when you hate what we're eating. <laughs> <laughs> there was only one Sorry, thing that I, there was only one thing that I, I Kate warned me when I got there. She was like, "I don't do that." What was it called? Ugali. Ugali. So she Maze said, "No, no, no, meal. I don't do that." What is it? <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Sorry. It's cool. Do you like ugali? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's boiled corn. It's tasteless. Yeah, I said, none. why don't we try salt? No. Uh -huh. Well, how about some onions? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Then I'm staying home and having chicken breast. <laughs> we had pizza. We had pizza. I said pizza. <laughs> we had pizza. For 15 I years, had I showed a good example, and I said, I'm done. That's I'm it. Done. I've had enough. <laughs> no more Monday night. Nope. Not coming. Um, our program manager, Mom Margaret, she was like, no, you have to try. You have to try before you leave to me. And I'm like, Kate's going. 
<laughs> no, I was like, don't okay, do it. okay, I'll give it a go, I'll give it a go. And I tried, I was like, Was it that bad? It just tastes like nothing. <laughs> she was like, That's the beauty of it. You put some jam on it, it's great. You do this with that. For I'm the like, babies, oh, they, no. they break it up in milk. The babies love it when they're first weaned. Yeah. Oh. That, God it, what, bless them. They don't know any better. That is so fascinating. <laughs> that is so fascinating. I, I, I love that. But wait, so, so where did you get pizza? Oh, uh, we went to the Down grocery the store. Street. Yeah, the grocery store. We can get pizza delivered. Are there pizza shops? <laughs> yes. yes. Really? That is, that's very cool. And there's oh, Kentucky yeah. Fried. There's no oh, yes. McDonald's yet, but there's a Kentucky Fry. There's Burger oh. King. Yeah. Burger pizza King. Hut. Domino's. Um, yep. Yeah. Oh, see, you'll be good, man. Yeah. <laughs> I like those, but you like those. No, I'm not, I can't. I'm not allowed. I'm too old to eat that stuff. It's bad for me. Oh, I, I mean, I'd rather eat the Monday night Ugali. stuff Everything than else that. Everything else is delicious. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Oui. Well, good. Welcome. Come. <laughs> no, in, in, in all honesty, we would definitely consider that if we could make that work at some point, because we've been talking about documenting, putting together a documentary based on some of the stories that we've that we've learned yeah. about on the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's listen, we, we're, we're up for for a road trip. We always oh, you know, always up for that. Wonderful. That'd be yeah, such that good be, fun. Oh, I really then we could be. take you to the elephant orphanage and you can oh, see yes. how sweet they are. Oh. They run to their mommies. They all have a mommy. Well, the elephant orphanage started out with a, a guy whose wife, he was in charge of the Savo National Park. And his wife, they found a baby elephant and she wanted to take him home. So she did. And an she, she fed him. Well, they're 200 pounds. I was going to say. Yeah. She, she fed him every day. And then she went back to England to greet her children over Christmas. And the baby wouldn't take food from anybody oh. else. And really? Died. Oh, my God. So she has young men. They all wear green, a green hat and a green lab coat and black book, boots. And so they all look the same. They look the same. But they change them. They keep mm -hmm. changing them so that they'll eat from anybody. So yeah. when they call the first 10 babies out, they all come running out and they run up to their guy who holds a gallon jug of milk up for them. Oh no my kidding. God, it's so cute. I, I filled my phone storage with photos while we were there. Like I, I, I was bet. like, Kate, I have to make more space. <laughs> I have no space on my phone. That is so awesome. Listen, yeah, And I, the next day we go to the giraffe center and we uh, see them. They're mm -hmm. so cute. You throw, you throw oh little protein bits in their mouth. Oh, they, they take their, oh my gosh, their tongues are so long and they oh, take yeah. it out and they wrap. Yeah. Uh, and then, well, when we were there, that was so funny. There was one, and it, it was kind of like standing back a little bit. And I said, oh, I'm going to go feed this one. No one's feeding now. And the uh, person who was working there goes, he's a little grumpy today, so we be careful. And I was like, <laughs> what, is, what does a little grumpy mean for that big of a, yeah. an animal? Yeah. Is he going to headbutt me? Like, there was like, a volunteer yeah. got headbutted. She had a black eye. This week. <laughs> she was holding all the propions in her hand and talking to the people here and the giraffe go, Grr. It just called her. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Don't waste that time so with funny. my dinner, please. That is that's very cool. What Listen, what you guys are doing is just so amazing. I'm so happy. Happy. Mm. So happy that you guys joined us. This you exceeded my expectations. Oh, I mean, honestly, I, <laughs> we brought it. I, we did good. You did great. I love what you're doing here. And 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 listen. And you need to come back to the U.S. more often. You need to make this a regular trip. I'm hoping. You're, well, you she are. has eleven sisters who applied for this job. Really? Yeah. Uh, that our biggest group are the group that's graduated. Yeah. There's forty of them. And 11, okay. 12 of them wrote and said, I want to be the storyteller for you, Mom. Because I said, we have to start getting a succession plan here. I'm not yeah. going to be able to. Tell me to... about Mom. What, 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 what is, where did, because you mentioned, you've mentioned that many times and you both called her Mom. Mom Kate, Mom mm. Margaret. Because yeah. yeah. women, women are all called Mom. That's the respectful thing to do. Really? So here's, here's my mother's room. Okay. The this whole, is, that's my dad's. This is every month of the year. Okay. I used to have my seven grandchildren on it, but then when I went to Africa, I needed every month because I have children born in every month. Every single month. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, mom, I'm this red one, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, not, I never, never thought of that. What about these? What, what, what are these? The Maasai people, most of the women in their 30s and 40s, the mothers of the children we're getting, have never been allowed to go to school. <clears throat> That's... 
I don't want to say they're the most backward, but I'll say they are the least progressive. Mm -hmm. They still raise camels north of us and goats and cows in our area. Is that the largest tribe in Kenya? I don't think so, is it? No. No. Kikuyu Kikuyu is the largest. Her tribe is the largest. They're the biggest on education. Okay. The biggest on business. But these folks are all still working the land. Yeah. And now that there's been no rain north of us, there's been no rain for four years. We're two four years. years. Four years. Two years. That's where Korma's cows all died. Yeah. So Good heavens. They have they all do this. This is the Kenya flag. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. This little girl just started high school. She lost her mother a year before we got her. She lost her father a month before we got her. Oh and the uncle that took over to be their guardian was killed a month after they, so they had two funerals within oh 30 God. days of each oh. other. We were home for the second funeral. She made this spring. And her kid sister, who's in sixth grade, made this one. Okay, tell them your joke. I, I, this, this one came from an employee to whom I gave his first job. And he was so grateful he got two Maasai mamas to make these. So I said, oh, Victor, this is wonderful. You know how bad my memory is. Pretty soon I'll say, oh, hello, nice to meet you. My name is (laughs) (laughs) I'm coming on this day, really. Little little Um, cheat sheet. (laughs) So this beaded business, is that's what they do for a living. They make wonderful belts. I'll get you a belt. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think we have one at Do the we? office. I believe we have one at the office. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. We've, this, is, this has been, as I said, a wonderful conversation. I am so blessed to have you guys here. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. And mm-hmm. so what I'd like to do is close out with a, with a parting thought, something that, that will make our audience think, make them think. Well, what I have learned in my long life is that everything in life is a blessing no matter what it is. Uh, when they're bright blessings, when they give us joy and make us thank God and make us happy to be alive, I call them bright blessings. But the dark blessings, the dark, the things that really hurt us are the things maybe that teach us the best. Don't I had to give up. up my husband. If my husband hadn't died, there wouldn't be any Hakima. Yeah. That, that is such giant lesson to me. Oh my goodness, yes. And, and the whole Hakeem, I used to think that it was my kids, my ministry. It's not, it's God's ministry. Right. God gave it to me to walk with for a while. And people say, oh, God bless you for doing No, I live with my blessing. These baby children are full of God. That's my new password for Amazon. Babies are so <laughs> full of God. It's a very really, true statement. It's wonderful. It's a very, very I, true statement. I have statement. to feel thankful. Well, and, 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 and that's a very important point because... You know, in my experience, the worst time of my life, the darkest time of my life created the best and the brightest, yeah. right? Had I not gone through that, as I said, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing this podcast. I wouldn't have the the mission that I have. I wouldn't be sharing the message that I do. Yeah. And I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing for yeah. that same reason. Yeah. So, How about you, young lady? Well, for me, it's just to say thank you to first to you for having us on your podcast and uh, to Hekima for changing my life, for giving me the opportunity. I believe through Hekima, some of my relatives who are at the village Mm -hmm. will maybe get the opportunity to go to school through me. So I'm grateful for to them for giving me the opportunity mm-hmm. to also change some people who I left at the village. Yeah, so I'm grateful to them. And um, yeah, to God, like, thank you for choosing me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah. No, a that's great wonderful. And, and listen, we, we will be thanking you for a long time for coming and joining us and sharing your story. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Uh, I have to echo exactly what you all said. You know, I think a lot of time when we're reflecting on our lives and what's brought us to the time that we're at, we're, we're, we'll say in a twofold kind of situation, oh, I wish that would have gone differently. Mm-hmm. I really wish 
I would have made a different choice. I would. I wish this would have been different. I wish I wouldn't have had to experience that. But all of that's brought you to where you are today. And it's kind of made you the person that you are today. Right. And if you don't love that version of you, mm-hmm. you have a lot of work to keep doing. Sure. Um, <laughs> but I am just fortunate to be part of this organization, this vision, this work that I get to do because of Kate. So we look right. up and say, thank you yes. for finding her for us. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> just thank everyone for their support for, for, for Hikima. Thank you for sharing our message, expanding it, you mm. know, and and take pause and really evaluate where you are in your life. And like I said, if you're if you're not satisfied with where you are, really think how you can be a better version of you. Mm-hmm. Sure. And sure. if that is joining Hikima family, please do. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And I think I, I think a lot of folks are going to join the Hikima family, including us. Mm. You have three three new family members right here. You, you sold us. So we wish you all the best. And listen, it, it's, you know, I, we, that's a whole nother show with this one right here. I, I can't even. I, I can't. I just can't. It, it's, you know, it's it, it's hard. It's, it's really difficult. Mm-hmm. It really is. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for having Kate, us. Thank it you so wonderful. much. This was wonderful. I, I appreciate I appreciate all three of you. Thank you, dear. Thank, thank you. you.